Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to the Rafa Duke Page Guy channel. It is I, Mr. LaDuke, back here once again to do a, a video. And it's a dark day for WWE today as with the coronavirus pandemic going on right now. It's led to WWE losing a lot, a lot of money. And it's officially led to arguably the biggest pack of releases I've ever seen in my existence as a WWE fan, as a guy that even paid attention to these. It's a big day. I'll quickly run down in case you haven't heard. So Superstars and Producers released. So earlier today the news broke uh, that Vince McMahon held a conference call with employees from WWE that included Superstars saying that they were going to make cuts. Basically because of the financial situation that WWE is in. Now, allow me to explain what kind of situation WWE is in. They got no money coming in from WrestleMania. Their shit got cancelled. They ended up doing it inside of an empty performance center basically just for the people. No Saudi money. Those shows got canned when the entire world started closing. The XFL just went under and filed for bankruptcy. That's going to cost them a shit ton of money. They had their money tied up in the building of a new headquarters. That just got fucked. So WWE, it was at a point, and you know, everyone's getting fucking cut these days. I got cut from my job. I got told to stay home basically from my job. Now I have a chance to go back. Might not most likely be the case for these people here, but quickly gonna run them down. Now this isn't me making fun of the situation or nothing, it's just to talk about it. And give them my thoughts on this. So, producers released. We have a, a few producers released. Now, this is the list at this time, which I believe it's almost 245. More names could be added. I will refresh the list on this video as well to see at the same time to keep you updated as much as I can. So, for the producers released, the list stands currently at Dave Fit Finley, former fin uh, Finley, has been released. Sucks because I know he was really popular with the women backstage. He had a good, he had a good hand, and he was a good producer. I've heard for a lot of people. Mike IRS Rotunda, the former wrestler known as IRS, has also been released as a producer. Sucks for him. Shane Hurricane Helms, the former Hurricane Gregory Helms, as well was released. Lance Storm, who recently came back, I think came back late last year, and he's. Part of the cuts that sucks for him. Billy Kidman, Pat Buck. I personally have no idea who that is personally. Sean Davari, Scott Armstrong, who's also a former longtime referee, and Sarah Stock, who I believe was a former wrestler back at TNA, from what I remember. These are the producers that have been released. Producers, it sucks, but you know. I hope a lot of these people, they were just released, but they'll be brought back when everything gets back to normal, no matter how long that takes. I hope this is just temporary, if anything, you know, for, for these people. And the superstars as well. Superstar so far, the list stands at Kurt Angle, who was added, who was a little bit of a shocker. Kurt, I think, was just running out the current contract he had with WWE anyways. He would probably have signed a Legends contract when that ended, so sucks for him. Drake Maverick, which is interesting, considering he was about to be in this Cruiserweight tournament since they're doing an interim Cruiserweight title tournament on NXT. He was one of the men participating as he had supposedly officially delegated the Cruiserweight division responsibilities to William Regal. So I don't know how WWE is going to book that. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, I figured he'd be one of the few, but still sucks for him. He just, he's been back in the company for four years. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Styles loses his OC brothers. That sucks. Uh, I heard they had just re-signed big time contracts. That WWE had given them huge contracts to keep them out of AEW. And Anderson and Gallows basically accepted them. I know that they... I had heard rumors they weren't the happiest to be there. And still felt like they were booked like with no direction. They still were kind. Of, they still kind of were. But sucks for them. And I don't know where they're going to end up going. He Slater, who ironically is one of the um, longer tenure names on this list, uh, you know, he's you know has been there forever. He's been there back in the Nexus days, so 
it really sucks for him that he was added to that, but this is really this is not a good day. Like really, really not. It's 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 horrible. It's really, really horrible. EC3 has been added. I think a lot of people were figuring the EC3 news was going to come anyways at some point. Aiden English, uh, who, you know, I don't know if he just retired from in-ring action or he took a break. I know he, well, he had injuries lingering on him. Uh, he was basically a commentator for NXT UK once in a while. He did NXT. He did 205 Live. He had no really real spot, so he's gone as well. And last name is Leo Rush. Uh, I know Leo was joking around saying that, um, you know, he, he wasn't in the Cruiserweight tournament, which was a little bit of a surprise that people, and, you know, he was sort of messing around with that, but he's been added to the cuts as well. So that is the current names on the list for the, um, the, 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 the cuts when it comes to WWE. Uh, besides that, that I'm gonna I've I'm using uh, nodq.com right now to uh, to update the, my list. I had written all the names down, but I'm still trying to see. As I was writing the names down, that's when I saw people like um, Kurt Angle was added and stuff like that. So currently trying to see if I can update the list as well. Kurt Hawk, I suppose, already commented on being released, so I'll check that out. It's just a horrible time in the world, and I figured those were going to be coming. I figured mostly with what happened to the XFL, that that was going to happen since the XFL went under, and that sort of fucked with WWE's money big time. But also WrestleMania not happening. This just shows like how much doing WrestleMania every year is a big source of income for WWE. Uh, producers, no one was really was re-added to the list. It still stands at Sarah Stock. Let's go see what is Kurt Hawkins' comment on being released currently by WWE. Should be interesting to see. I, I don't know. Like I, I, I figure a lot of people are going to comment, oh, they're going to all go all to AEW and everything's going to be A-OK -okay for them. I doubt AEW is going to go on some sort of big, you know, signing spree of all these people. I think, you know, they're already looking to maybe get uh, the former Revival. Now they're just known, I guess, as FTR. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Let's see Kurt Hawkins comment. Uh, Kurt Hawkins said, Last time I got fired, I had a really funny tweet to res in response to it. doesn't really feel appropriate today. I will say this. A lot of very talented people lost their jobs today. Now the disaster, the pro wrestling community will raise stronger than ever. Uh, interesting. And he also uh, commented, oh, and the at Heath Slater one-man rock band seminar at, at Creator Pro Wrestling is going to be fire. So Kurt Hawkins was the first one to really comment on the, his release. Uh, you know, it's not, gonna, it's not a fun time. It's not a time to, you know, celebrate people's releases or talking about where they could go. Oh, now they'll be better used by so-and-so or so-and-so. It doesn't feel right to be this type of situation. It's just sad all around. And I know a lot of people are going to put heat on WWE for these releases. And people feel like, you know, and these are only people that's released. There's also rumors that not just beside releases, also going to say people on furlough or furlong, whatever it's called. Uh, basically telling people, look, we can't keep you around. We, we want to keep you around. You're really important to us, but we can't pay you. My apologies. Just, you know, we're going to send you on furlough. Go home. And we'll call you when we need you. And basically furlough. From what I read, probably means no pay. Is it really that? I don't know. But there's furloughing up a portion of employees. That's another thing that came out of the call today with Vince. So it's it's interesting. Especially this comes out, you know... A few days as well after the WWE was deemed an essential business by um, the state of Florida. So, what? Just I'm going to recap one final time. So, Kurt Angle, Drake Maverick, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows. Uh, arguably, I think they were one of the most misused teams as well. I know a lot of people mentioned the revival, but oh, the the OCBC or whatever you were on the column as well. Heath Slater, 
Eric Young as well really misused. You know, his time in San Diego was we're gonna was, was always gonna be his highlight. It seems. EC3, he came in lots of promise, that just fell down a cliff. I mean, you know, they tried calling him up like for nothing. Aiden English and of course Leo Rush. So that's about it. Uh, you know, it sucks that these releases happen. A lot of these people. If you would have asked me, like, in just a typical sort of release, you know, they usually do the spring cleaning type of release. Nah, I think they did it uh, earlier this year, like they did with the Ascension and stuff like that. I would have said, sure. You know, I would have said, put some names on that. That's like Kurt and stuff like that. But this just came, like, bam, like that. And it sucks. It's horrible. And I just hope the best for all these people. I hope they have money. They have their financial stuff so they can keep living, keep surviving. And we're going to get through this, people. Whether it be the fighting community, the sports community, the community in general, wrestling. We're all going to get through this, you know. If we can find a way to support each other and just stand strong together, I think, you know, we're going to do great. And I think we're going to get through this. Just, you know, this, this world, as crazy as it is, as mean as it can be, We've survived, and we will survive again, and we will thrive again. So, I want to thank you know the producers on this list: Finley, Mike Rotunda, Shane Helms, Lance Storm, Billy Kidman, Pat Buck, Sean Devaris, Scott Armstrong, and Sarah Stock for all their work they've done into producing what we watch on Mondays, Fridays, Wednesdays, um, Sundays, Saturdays, all that. And Kurt Angle, you know, he had a good last, he had an interesting little last run. His retirement match was horrible, but he deserved to go out way better. And this, adding this to it, it's rough. You know, Drake Maverick, thank you. He was a great manager, GM. He seemed to, you know, maybe be poised for something in the ring with this tournament, but that got cut short. Kurt Hawkins came back, tried to do the best of what he could with a really, really bad gimmick. Got a Raw Tag Team title run out of it with his buddy Ryder. And then he seemed to, you know, him and Ryder seemed to be having a lot of fun with their podcast and everything. So, thank you, Kurt, Carl, Luke, the OC. Thank you. You know, they've done, they gave us some good matches. They, it felt like they did their best a lot of times, but I felt they could have been poised for much more. I feel... Like, they wanted to do much more, but it was never really given to them. And was never really, they were never really, to me personally, felt like they were really given a good chance. Heath Slater, thank you for making a fool out of yourself. For being a lovable, fun character out on, in WWE TV. From, you know, the three-man band to I Got Kids. You know, you were always someone that entertained, you know, no matter what. Eric Young, your time with Sandy. Sandy was one of the best groups NXT ever had. I still feel like they are. It sucks that how it ended, and it sucks that you, you know, you could have been poised to be much more in the baby, but none of this is your fault. EC3, thank you for, you know, I got to see him wrestle in Brooklyn. He, he's a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler and entertainer, but WWE fucked up with him. Aiden English, the VOD villains, you know, Rusev Day, you were a good commentator. Uh, when I saw you out in the streets of Montreal after 205 Live, you're really cool. You're really nice to, 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 to say hi and talk to. So thank you, man. And Leo Rush, entertaining manager of Bobby Lashley, annoying as all hell, but that was your role. And the good Cruiserweight champion at the time that you were, you did great. You know, you beat Drew Gulak, Los Angel Garza. You officially made the transition from 205 Live to the NXT belt, to the belt also beyond NXT. This just sucks, ladies and gentlemen, you know. It's, it's the state of the world that we're living in. It's not, I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. But, God damn it. It's, it's, it's rough. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Leave a like if you want to. Leave your comments down below. What do you think on these bunch of releases? You know, is WB at fault for everything? They should just told everyone to stay home and kept paying them their paychecks. You know, this is an ugly situation. And I think there's no really right answer to anything. So, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Stay safe, people. Have yourselves a very good day.